the reason I wanted you to, to, to add um, Curtis through the in my cash was because historically every MAS class in TUSD started out with in my cash. Um, and to the state superintendent of education, and remember we come from the home of 1070. So the you know, Arizona has, um, in, in our lifetime, um, risen to be the South, the new South for Latinos, for Mexicanos. And so in the spirit of 1070 and in that same legislative session is when they passed HB 2281, which becomes a statute that is used by the state of Arizona, by the superintendent of public schools, to ban this curriculum in Tucson Unified School District. It was the school district in the state that had developed it. It had a group of educators, of which Curtis was a member, there's others here, Lorenzo was a member, Ray Martinez was a member, and, and, and numerous others, who had devoted their careers to the development of this curriculum in conjunction with many of you, because that, that curriculum represents the product of all of us. It represents the product of many scholars and certainly of all of our histories. Um, it goes back you know, thousands of years. And they dared to tell that story, and they dared to share that history, and they dared to instill that identity in our students. And that effort was transformative. It turned students who had no interest in their education into learners. It turned students who did not see themselves as having an academic identity as potential scholars and then turning themselves into scholars. And I think that for all of you educators who are in this room, you know that you can only do so much. That if the switch doesn't go on inside that heart and in that mind, it's, it's almost like talking to this wall or this ceiling. But once that switch goes on, I just kneel. And that's what's good. The other thing you should know about this case and about this legacy and this history and, and part of you know, the team that's here filming is at the root, you know, and many things that have happened in, in the movement, there's, there's a, some, some event that switches it, that starts it off. So what was that firestorm? Firestorm was about an important lady with an incredible history, who's kind of known to being, you know, an agent of change, um, who dared to come into Tucson, to be at Tucson High School, to face a, an audience in our auditorium, high school auditorium, of MAS students, and ask one question, one simple question. Why do Republicans hate Latinos? That's the question she asked. Now, she asked that question before the firestorm had really started. She, based on her experience, knew what was coming. As many of us, I think, kind of understood what was coming. And Dolores Huerta, You know, sharing over time, her leadership, her history, her caring, to be in front of our students. But that was part of our curriculum. And that one question was a question that apparently the state superintendent of education at the time, Mr. Horn, believed he didn't have the right to ask, let alone get an answer to, let alone think about it. And as Mr. Horn, who then becomes our superintendent, excuse me, our attorney general, um, and starts the enforcement of the statute, and then Mr. Hoopenthal takes over to complete that, that enforcement effort, that curriculum gets banned. And, and I just want to read you real quickly so you know what the law said. Basically, it had four prohibitions. One was to promote the overthrow. You, you could not teach a curriculum or have a class that 
would promote the overthrow of the United States government. Nobody alleged MAS did that. That's only because I couldn't read our minds. <laughs> <laughs> Number two was a curriculum that would promote resentment towards a race or class of people. And I, again, if you think about starting a class with M. Like Kesh, we're alleged of having had a curriculum that promoted resentment towards a race or class of people. The third one was a curriculum that's designed primarily for pupils of a particular ethnic group. Now that's the one provision of Judge Tashima at the district court level found unconstitutional. And the fourth was, how dare you have a curriculum that could be perceived as advocating ethnic solidarity instead of the treatment of pupils as individuals. <laughs> as though those are mutually exclusive terms. So I'm not going to get into all the details. I'd be happy to answer any questions, but I want to turn this to a, a boring legal thing about the constitutional challenges. But, but I would like to say something about, real briefly, about <clears throat> the team. We fight this at the district court level. This case has a very unique history and that, that I think is part of the legacy of the case is that if the original judge we had assigned to this is the judge who's murdered. Okay. The judge who's murdered in uh, Dixon, Arizona, uh, Judge Roll, when the, the Gifford shooting. Um, judge Tishima, uh, who a, was a senior Ninth Circuit judge, takes over the case. Uh, we had high hopes um, that he would be a receptive audience, for it, given his own history and legacy, and that um, Judge Tishima and his family have been a involuntarily guest of the state of Arizona by, by virtue of the federal government during the Second World War. Um, and ironically, the, the legal team, part of the legal team that, that and, and our legal leader, uh, our legal legal leader, um, is from the Karamatsu Center at the Seattle uh, University School of Law, um, uh, Robert Chan, Professor Chan. He's been just an incredible, incredible force um, from scholars from, from the Karamachi Center um, and, and from a, a number of other sources, um, he's put together just, you know, briefing and, and created historical documents um, that you can all be very proud of because the, the legal record made here is not only complete and accurate, it's really representative of our history. Um, and the other thing you should know about Monday and, and this is a conscious decision on our part. It didn't happen by accident. Um, one of the leading scholars in the United States will be arguing on our behalf. Uh, dean uh, Erwin Cherminsky, who's the dean of the law school at the uh, University of California, Irvine uh, School of Law, um, agreed as a, one of the preeminent uh, constitutional law scholars in the country, uh, signed on to the legal team. Um, and people have asked, you know, about the choices made, uh, and a lot of them fell back to me. But I thought that the legal team represented what MAS was always all about, about our diversity, our pluralism, how interconnected we all are to each other, and that this was never a curriculum as we were accused about only Latinos only, Latino first, uh, no, this was always about understanding your identity, reaching out your hand, accepting the love of others, and that we all move forward together. Uh, and so that's what the legal team, I think you have and should be very proud of. Um, and because one of the unique things is I, I think that this is an important case, and what happens Monday before the Ninth Circuit will be critical. But that pluralism and that diversity that is the core value of this curriculum was exemplified in those lawyers who stepped forward to represent all of you. Thank you.